Hello, my name is Nick Carroll and this is my in the bag. I have a bag instead of a backpack because I'm a, essentially a beginner level player. I started playing a year and nine months ago and this is essentially a relatively small loadout because I don't need a ton of discs. Also, I'm old and I don't want to carry a bunch. This bag here that you see before you, this is the one that I carry whenever I go out and I play solo, which isn't very often, but when I do, I want this bag. I have a, another bag that I use that I take with me um, that also has a similar loadout of 9 or 10 discs whenever I'm with friends because those games tend to play longer. Sometimes I play two rounds instead of just one and ultimately I want something lighter. This bag when filled with discs is about one pound lighter than this bag. However, this is an ultralight bag and the material isn't of the highest quality whereas this is a little bit more of a durable quality and it stands up whenever some discs are removed whereas this one you remove one of the discs and all of a sudden it starts falling over and it's really hard to stand up but that's what you get when you go with an ultralight bag but anyways let's go ahead and talk about the discs so my bag I divide into three types of discs putters mid-range and drivers and most people tend to do that but considering I'm an introductory uh, level player, uh, I'm a recreational player that throws about 250 absolute max and most of my throws are about 200. The drivers that I carry are exclusively fairway or control drivers. But let's go ahead and start out with the putters. Um, I've got three putters and uh, uh, because I run with an all in of a lineup, my primary putter is an AVR. This is also the very first disc that I bought about a year and a half ago and it's a classic AVR so it's uh, a very straight putter and even after using it for the last year and a half it's uh, still relatively straight for me and these putters I tend to use under 100 feet but this is my primary putter that I am always trying to get into the basket most of the time. My next uh, putter is an AVR, not an AVR Classic, but it fundamentally flies about the same, particularly for the distances that I throw, which is under 100 feet. This one is Glow DX, whereas my AVR is DX Plastic. And the Glow DX I would uh, use at a, at a game where it was getting really dark or it ended up being night. I played a night game a few months ago and I realized that I can't see things, so I need at least one disc where I can shine a flashlight on and throw but I almost never throw this I only throw it whenever it's night and my last putter is a rhino this is an overstable putter so it's designed to uh, avoid uh, turning and it's supposed to fade towards the end of its flight path particularly closer towards the 60 80 100 uh, foot mark in which I throw it and this I tend to use for longer throws where I want it to fade and slow down as it lands and to essentially not go as far when it hits the ground whereas this straight AVR putter uh, I'm okay with it traveling a little bit more when it hits the ground so these two have different uses but typically I have a straight putter and an overstable putter and that's the theme that I tend to use whenever I go with my discs. Now let's go with my mid-ranges. Now I only have two mid-ranges and technically they are putters because I don't like throwing the oversized diameter discs. I'll, I got used to throwing the putter and driver size discs, not the larger ones that are like a half inch or, or a wider. Um, also, I tend to throw these further, whereas the putters I don't throw beyond 100 feet. I usually putt to about 40 feet and throw to about 100 feet. These here, these putters are more like mid-ranges in that they're speed three and they have uh, larger uh, wings or rims and they're designed to go a little bit further plus when they hit the ground they'll tend to go a little bit further. So I tend to throw these in, within the 100 foot to 200 foot range and the dart I love. This is all, uh, these are both in DX plastic as well. Uh, this goes straight with a very hint of fade towards the end. Once I throw it past 100 feet there's going to be a little bit of fade but this will throw as far as I can get it and get it straight up to the 200 foot mark with a reasonable amount of fade that doesn't hook too hard. So this is my primary mid-range slash approach D. 
disc. That's what I use this for. My next disc, this is my overstable disc. It's called the Hydra, and it's technically an R-Pro plastic, but it feels very much like DX. But this is a floaty uh, putter slash mid-range disc. And I like using this whenever I want the disc to kind of avoid turning, and I want it to fade more, or if I do a relatively low low uh, low distance putt or throw, I only really throw with these, but whenever I throw these at a relatively short distance, this one I can expect to sort of uh, turn, uh, not turn, but fade a bit, and that's the exact kind of behavior that I want. Plus, if I'm near water, and I'm gonna throw any sort of modest distance, I use this as opposed to this or any of my other discs because I specifically want this to float because I'd like to retrieve it and get it back uh, because I've thrown a handful of discs into the water over the years, the last couple years, and it's only because of these floating discs that I've been able to get some of them back uh, and that's why I like it. But these are my mid-ranges. Last but not least, I've got my drivers and I have five drivers total and they each serve a unique purpose and these tend to come in a little bit more expensive or premium plastic. Not saying that the Glow DX isn't more premium, but it's not in very much more sturdy than the DX plastic. Or this R-Pro plastic that's used for the floating disc is also not of the highest quality, but I don't throw these at the longest ranges, so I don't expect to pay 20 plus dollars for a disc for those. But for these, because I'm throwing them 200 feet or more, Sometimes sub 200 feet, but I'm mostly expecting to throw these off the tee or at a relative maximum uh, throwing speed whenever I'm heading towards a basket, but not on the tee. So whenever I'm trying to throw around the 200, 180 to 250 foot mark, I'm using these five discs. Now my primary driver is called the Leopard, and it's in, par in pro plastic. This is modestly understable, but in my hands, uh, considering I'm throwing it about 200 feet, it's largely straight. It will turn a tiny bit, but realistically this is a very straight uh, disc for me, and that's why I like it. I can get the most distance with this disc, notwithstanding the next disc that I'm about to show you. This TL, this is also in Glow DX Plastic like my AVR and I've got a rock in DX Glow plastic that I don't bag in this bag, but will be bagged in, in uh, bigger bags. But this is essentially a straight driver for me, uh, whereas a number of TLs and the more premium uh, plastic don't have turn and they, and they fade. This does turn a little bit and fades, but in my hand this is absolutely straight, but it does fade and I like using this for max distance throws. And this and my Leopard are the two that I try to get the most distance. Next up is my Gazelle. This is in Champion Plastic. This is overstable for me. And this is what I throw when I basically want a guarantee of no turn or turnover. When I want for sure this to fade. So when I throw it, I expect it to go straight and then fade. I'm comfortable with the fade and I expect it to fight through wind and it's a heavier weight than the other two discs because of that. Most discs that I buy or that I use uh, are max weight discs so they're around the 175 gram marks and this is no different. I prefer this whenever I'm fighting the wind and whenever I want to guarantee not to go to my right when I want it to go to the left. This whip it this is my utility disc, my meat hook, my very overstable disc. This is explicitly designed to go a certain distance and then hook to my left. And this does the trick. I've never been able to turn this. I don't expect to turn it. And whenever I'm expecting to throw a certain distance and definitely it hook hard to my left, um, this is an absolutely reliable disc. In fact, it almost basically flies fairly straight, starts a turn, and then basically says, no, I'm done, and then just careens towards the ground, which I've never seen in any other disc, and I love it for that. And it also doesn't tend to roll away very far when it, once it lands. So if it does land and it starts to roll, it generally tends to taper out relatively quickly, but because it has a 
very reliable behavior. I use it for that purpose. It's also in DX plastic because at the time that I bought it, there were no whippets in premium plastic at the time. But also, I wanted to experiment with a relatively inexpensive disc and just see how it works. And it works perfectly. Last but not least is my floating driver, the infamous Dragon disc. And I love using this anywhere near water. That doesn't mean necessarily I'll get it back if it goes in the water, particularly if it's a stream, it'll float off. This is the second dragon that I've purchased, the very first one I threw into a river and it <laughs> uh, was never seen again, but I expect that. But the reason why I have this is because I want to get this disc back and I'm comfortable with the behavior that it throws by default. This is modestly understable in my hands, but it does also fade fairly predictably, predictably whenever I throw it. So this is basically a straight flying disc for me, but I have to put up with a little bit of understable turnover when I let it go. But it's also great if the water is off to my left or up in front of me and I have to throw over it. Because this I can throw 200 plus feet consistently and so I can trust it to get beyond a lake or get to the edge of a lake and then I can retrieve it with a stick or something or I might dip my leg in it or usually if I'm playing with friends I've got at least one of them that uh, is a retrieval expert and will one way or the other get it back. So this is basically my discs that I throw as far as in my bag. As far as the bag itself, I love it that it stands up and it's got these dividers that help to stand up and it's made of relatively sturdy material but it allows me to carry more such as not just my keys and my wallet but my phone. I can put here in the side bag, I can put my marker here, I can put an extra you know, bag in here, I've got a flashlight in here and then of course I can put a putter here if I really need to but I mostly just put my uh, marker here for when I throw and again whenever I throw solo I have a marker with me because I like to use it wherever I'm with friends they don't like to use markers I don't need to carry it so I don't necessarily need something like that so also this bag here can carry a much larger bottle even larger than this whereas this I typically will put a 16 ounce bottle in here that'll barely fit in it but I'm pretty comfortable using this ultralight for its own purposes, but for the most part, if I were to enter like a tournament or any sort of professional type of uh, disc throwing event, I would use this bag, or if I'm playing solo and I'm practicing and I'm trying to get into that certain mode of just playing in sort of course grade disc golf as opposed to just goofing around with buddies disc golf. So that's gonna do it for my in, in the bag. I will have other bag reviews uh, in the future. I've already done a bag review on this. I will be doing a bag review on this and a few other bags that I've got and the, a few others that I'll be picking up. Plus I'll be doing some disc reviews, not just on these discs, but other discs that I throw but are not mentioned here. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.